Hi, Mr. Eslop here, talking you through year 12, PSM 0. Feel free just to fast forward to the bit where you got wrong or to watch the whole thing. It's highly up to you. Anyway, I'm going to start off question 1A, which is a simple indice question and asks us to find the 16 to the power of a half. And what you hopefully all know is that any number to the power of a half is simply the square root of that number. So the answer to 16 to the power of a half is the square root of 16. This is technically plus or minus 4, but you would have got away with just writing 4. Part B, a bit more difficult because we have a negative indice. We have 16 to the power of negative 3 over 2. Which, so the first thing we're going to do is deal with the negative part of the index. So that means we're going to find the reciprocal of 16 to the power of 3 over 2. So it becomes 1 over 16 to the power of 3 over 2. Now what we've got to do is work out what is 16 to the power of 3 over 2. And we can think of that as 16 to the power of a half. All cubed using our index or 6 to the power of a half all cubed is the same as 16 to the power of 3 over 2. And we just worked out in part A that 16 to the power of a half is 4. So this is 1 over 4 cubed, which is 1 over 64. And that will get you all the marks. Now, question 2, another indice question. This time, instead of being to the power of a half, we've got the power of a third. But that works in a similar way. Power of a third of any number is the cube root of that number. So we know the cube root of 8 is 2. In part B, again, we've got to deal with the negative first. The negative finds the reciprocal. So we're going to do 1 over 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Which again, we can rewrite with the, as 8 to the power of a third, all raised to the power of 2. So that's 8 to the power of a third squared. We've just found out in the previous part that 8 to the power of a third is 2. So that's 1 over 2 squared. The answer to this question is 1 over 4. Question 3, a bit more difficult. We have algebraic fractions, a bit more work to do. First one is a subtraction, and we treat this exactly like you would addition and subtraction of numerical fractions, where the idea before doing, the, before doing any additional subtraction is to make all the denominators the same. And ideally, to save yourself some work simplifying at the end, you want to get all the fractions of the lowest common multiple of 2, 9, and 18. The lowest common multiple of 2, 9, and 18 is 18. So to, we're going to rewrite it. As instead of having this number over 2, we've got to multiply numerator and denominator by 9 to make it over 18. So we can rewrite that as 27 into the 3, multiplied by 2x minus 3y. All over. 18. And this next one, so to make it over 9, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, so we make it 8 multiplied by 3x plus y, all over 18. And then this 3x minus 17 is already over 18. Right, so now we can bring all the numerators together over, over the common denominator of 18. So we can write it as, we'll expand at the same time as well. So we've got 54x, 27 times 2x, minus 81y, 27 times 3y, minus 24x, 8 times 3x. Then we've got a negative 8 multiplied by a positive y, so make sure you write that as a negative 8y. And we've got negative 3x, and this is where a lot of people went wrong. We've got a negative here and a negative here, so that makes this a plus 17. So we're going to put all of that 
of AD. So now all we've got to do to get all the marks is to simplify the numerator. We've got 54x minus 24x minus 3x, that is 27x. Got minus 81y minus 8y, so that's minus 89y. And then we just got that plus 17. And all of that has to go over 18 for all the marks. Now this cannot be with a multiplying fraction question, which again you can treat like you would numerical fractions by doing numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and then simplifying. But just like with numerical fractions, you can save yourself a little bit of time by simplifying diagonally, which is common factors diagonally. So looking here, I'll start here. There's a 3 goes into 3 and 9, so we can divide by 3 diagonally here. Turns that into a 1, but we don't need to write 1. And turns that into a 3. Here we've got an a and an a squared, so if we divide by a, that becomes a 1, and that becomes an a. And we've got a b squared and a b squared, so we can divide by b squared, make that 1 and that 1. So now look at these two, we've got a 5 and a 15, so we can divide through by 5 to make that a 1, and this a 3. We've got a b cubed and a b squared, so if we divide through by b squared, that becomes a b, and that becomes a 1. And we've got a c and a c squared, so if we divide through by c, that becomes a c, and that becomes a 1. So now we look at what we've got left, we've got just 1 here multiplied by 3c, so we've got 3c on the numerator. And we've got a b multiplied by 3a, so we've got 3ab on the denominator. Now the last bit of simplifying, we can divide numerator and denominator by 3 to give our final answer C over AB. Right, question 4 caused a lot of confusion because all it's asking you to do is complete the square, but it's not saying complete the square for this expression, it's saying write it in this way, but that is the completed square form. A lot of you got caught out, didn't realise that all you have to do is complete the square. But whenever you're seeing questions like this, just remember it is a completed square question. That is completed square form. So to complete the square, we half the coefficient of x. So write it as x minus 4 squared, so that's half of minus 8. Now all we've got to work out is what have we got to add or subtract to this to make it equal x squared minus 8x minus 29. Well, x minus 4 all squared would be x squared minus 8x add 16. We don't want add 16, we want minus 29. What have we got to do to get from add 16 to minus 29? Minus 45. So that's our answer. So A is minus 4 and B is minus 45. And B, to solve the equation, it says hence or otherwise. It tells us that the answer is going to be as a third. So it suggests it's not a quadratic equation that can be solved by factorising. So it's not a rational answer. But you can try and solve it by quadratic formula, which some of you did, but you're wasting a little bit of time. The fact it says hence suggests that you can use your answer to part A. And if you look, it's the same expression as we had in part A. So I'm just going to rewrite this in completed square form and then solve it from there. Instead of writing x squared minus 8x minus 29 equals 0, it's like x minus 4 all squared minus 45 equals 0. All I'll do now, add the 45 to both sides, so I get x minus 4 squared equals 45. Now I can square root both sides, so I get x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 45. And that square root of 45 can be simplified. Because we know that the square root of 45 is the same as the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 5. Always look out for numbers that have a square number as a factor. The square root of 9 and the square root of 5, which we know can be rewritten as, I'll put the x minus 4 back in, x minus 4 is going to equal plus or minus, the square root of 9 is 3, so it's plus or minus 3 root 5. 
Now all we do to finish off the question, add 4 to both sides, and we've got our answer. So x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 3 root 5. And actually, if you could do that successfully, it made number 5 a little bit easier. Because number 5, actually, is just saying right root 45 in the form a root 5, which we've just done in the last question. We just showed that that was 3 root 5. Right, now part B, rationalising the denominator question. We don't care about the numerator. That can be as irrational as you want. The problem we've got here is the denominator is 3 minus root 5. We need to make that rational. And whenever you've got an addition or subtraction on the, numerator, on the denominator, you multiply through by the conjugate of that to do different to two squares. So what we're going to multiply through by in this case is 3 plus root 5 over 3 plus root 5. I remember you have to think you have to multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing or you are completely changing the whole expression. Even if you make a rational denominator, if all you've done is multiply the denominator by something and not multiply by the numerator by the same thing, you've completely changed the expression. So whatever you do to one part of the fraction has to be done to the other part of the fraction. So now we'll do this then. So on top we've got 2 times 3 plus root 5 times 3 plus root 5. On the, uh, on the denominator, sorry, we've got 3 minus root 5 times 3 plus root 5. Now we'll just expand the brackets to get the answers. So on the top we have 2 multiplied by 2 foil, 3 times 3, 9. 3 times root 5, 3 root 5. Again, root 5 times 3, 3 root 5. And root 5 times root 5, 5. And on the bottom, we have difference of two squares. But in case you don't just notice that immediately, I'll go for every step of FOIL. So it's 3 times 3, 9. We've got 3 times plus root 5, plus 3 root 5. We've got minus root 5 times 3, minus 3 root 5. And we've got minus root 5 times root 5, which is minus 5. So if we bring all that together, I'm going to times everything in the bracket by 2 on the numerator. So first I'm going to do a bit of simplifying now. So I've got 9 add 5, so it would actually be 14 if I simplified the top. So it's going to be 2 times 14, not i going to do both of those things at once, 2 times 9 and the 2 times 5. So I'm going to write 28. And we've got 3 root 5 add 3 root 5, that's 6 root 5. Multiply by that 2, we've then got 12 root 5. Now on the bottom, the plus 3 root 5 and the minus 3 root 5 cancel. That's the only reason why we multiply by the conjugate to do a difference of two squares. And so we're just left with 9 minus 5, which is 4. And all we can do now to simplify everything is it's a common factor of 4 throughout. So if we divide through by 4, we get 7. 28 divided by 4 plus 3 root 5 all over 1. We don't have to write over 1. We can just leave it as 7 plus 3 root 5. Number 6 is just a factorised question, but caught a lot of you out because it had a cubic. Obviously, a lot of you might be thinking, we don't know how to factorise cubics, but it's not a difficult cubic with a constant on the end. It's a common factor of x throughout. So all you have to do to make it quadratic is take out the common factor of x. So we get x and x squared minus 4x plus 3. You can't just divide by the common factor of x and get rid of it because you've changed the expression. 
you have to make sure you keep it on the outside here. So now what we've got to do is just flat divide this quadratic. So we know a quadratic, double brackets, x at the beginning of both brackets. And we've got to find two numbers that multiply together to give positive 3 and add together to give minus 4 and they are minus 3 and minus 1. And that's the question done. 7 more thirds, part A. Different to two squares, but again, I'll just go through the whole process in case you don't notice that, the whole FOIL process. So, in FOIL, 4 times 4, 16. 4 times minus root 3, minus 4 root 3. Root 3 times 4, plus 4 root 3. root 3 times minus root 3, minus 3. Now if we simplify all that together, the minus 4 root 3 and the plus 4 root 3 cancel out to give 0, so all we're left with is a 16 minus 3, the answer is 13. And that actually helps us out a lot on part B. So in part B, in order to rationalise this denominator, we are going to multiply by 4 minus root 3 over 4 minus root 3. And so on the denominator, we're going to have 4 plus root 3 times 4 minus root 3. We don't have to show that working out again, because we've already shown in A that that is 13. So the denominator is 13. And the numerator will therefore be 26 multiplied by 4 minus root 3. So to expand that, we well, actually I won't expand. I'll simplify before expanding. So I can see there's a common factor of 13 numerator and denominator. So if I divide through by 13, I get 1 on the bottom and 2 instead of 26. And we don't write over 1. I can just write this as 2 times by 4 minus root 3. And then just to write it in the form it asked for in the question, I'll just expand through now. The answer is 8 minus 2 root 3. Okay, question 8 talks about how many roots something has. Whenever you see a question which is talking about equations having equal roots or two real roots or no real roots, always think discriminant. We're going to just look at the discriminant. So I'll get you some of the marks on question 8. So discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So what we've got, but this, still even if you realise discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, you might not realise what it has to equal if it's got equal roots, if you haven't maybe thoroughly revised. So if it's got equal roots, b squared minus 4ac should equal 0. But then you've still got to work out in this question, because it's a bit confusing for all the p's, what is b, what is a, and what is c? But b is always a coefficient of x. But in our case here, b is 2p. So we've got to do 2p squared. And remember that is 2p all squared, not 2 times p squared. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, the coefficient of, a, of x squared, times c, which is a constant added on. The whole constant is 3p add 4. So that is c, 3p add 4. And that, that must equal 0, but that equal roots. So 2p all squared is 2 squared times p squared, which is 4p squared. We're going to subtract from that 4 times 1 times 3p plus 4. So that's 4 times 3p, 12p, add 4 times 4. 16, but remember, negative times a plus. That's got to be a minus 16. So now, your, your first thought whenever trying to solve a quadratic, and that's what we've got here, a quadratic, should be to factorise. You might not like the fact it's a 4p squared, and so that's hard to factorise. But look, here's a common factor of 4 throughout that we can divide by. And because on the right we've got 0, we've ended up with 0 divided by 4. So the 4 does just disappear, so to speak. 
So we can divide 3 by 4, so we get p squared minus 3p minus 4 equals 0. And then we factorise, we get p minus 4 times p add 1 equals 0. So the two answers for p would be p equals 4 or p equals minus 1. But we say, it says up here p is a positive constant. So the only solution, therefore, is that p must equal 4. All right, so this part b, it wants us now we know what p is to be able to solve the equation. So we can simply write the equation, now we know what p is, the equation is x squared plus 2 times px, which is 8x plus 3 times p plus 4, which is 3 times 4 plus 4, that's plus 16, equals 0. And again, first thing you should think of when solving a quadratic is, can it factorise? It can factorise. It is x plus 4 times x plus 4, and we should have known both factors to be the same, because we knew it was a repeated root. So therefore, our answer is simply that x equals minus 4. Right, question 9, again, similar to the question we had earlier, it is a completing the square question, just written in a different way. It's got find a and b, and what, how do you find a and b? You complete the square. So to complete the square, we halve the coefficient of x, so we get x plus 1 squared in the bracket, and then we work out what have we got to add to that to get x squared plus 2x plus 3. Well, x plus 1 all squared would be x squared plus 2x plus 1. We don't want plus 1, we want plus 3, so we're going to add... 2. And that is our answer. And now part B, we need to sketch the graph indicating coordinates of any intersections with the axes. We all defined y intersections with x equals 0. So if x equals 0, y would equal 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 3. So it's going to cross the y-axis at 3. In order to let find the x-coordinate crossings, we find out what happens when y equals 0. So if y equals 0, that would mean x squared plus 2x plus 3 would equal 0, which would mean this thing would equal 0. So if you imagine if x plus 1 all squared plus 2 equals 0, and that would mean x plus 1 squared would have to equal negative 2. And that can't happen because we can't square root a negative number. So, therefore, it must there must be no real roots to this equation. And we could check that with b squared minus 4ac. b squared is going to be 4 squared, uh, 2 squared, sorry, which is 4. And then we're going to subtract from that 4 times 1 times 3. So and that actually, what it's, I'm not getting ahead of myself a bit to question it for part C, but there isn't, we can find that that's negative, so it doesn't cross the x axis anyway. Another way you can see it doesn't cross the x axis is that the completed square form tells that the minimum value of the graph must be when x is minus 1 and y is 2. So it's a, this does not cross the x axis. So it will look a bit like this. comes down here, turns, and it crosses the y-axis at 3. three. So that coordinate there is 0, 3. And then part C, we work out discriminant. B squared minus 4ac. Always remember that's what discriminant is. B squared minus 4ac. So that is going to be 2 squared, I've already mentioned this, minus 4 times 1 times 3. This equals 4 minus 12, which is simply minus 8. And how does that relate to our sketch in part B? Well, that's a negative number, so that means it, it doesn't cross the x axis at any point, so there are no real roots, and our sketch showed. That doesn't cross your x axis any bit, but just label that skirt, actually. But that's how it relates. Therefore, no x axis crossing because it's a negative. Right, so that is part 9 done. Nice 7 marks for you there. Question 9. Question 10 inequalities questions. Hopefully, part A, second nature to most of you, it's just solving linear equation, which is having a 
equal signs, got inequality sign instead, but treated the same way by adding and subtracting things to both sides, getting all the x's on the same side, getting all the constants on the same side. So first thing we'll do to get all the x's on the same side, we'll add x. So if we add x to both sides, we get 5x minus 5 is greater than 15. Then we're going to add the 5 to both sides. So we get 5x is greater than 20. And then we're going to divide both sides by 5. So we get x is greater than 4. And that's it. Nice, easy. Three marks. Three marks, sorry. The bit more difficult is a quadratic. And again, you treat it the same way you would a quadratic equation by getting everything, by making one side equal 0 and everything else being on the other side. So first thing I'll do is expand the bracket. So I'll get x squared minus 4x is greater than 12. Then I'm going to subtract the 12 to make one side 0. x squared minus 4x minus 12 is greater than 0. And now, just like with a quadratic, I'll try and factorise. That's always be your first thought. And I can factorise this to x minus 6, x plus 2. But this is where a lot of you lost marks. It's very easy at this stage to think, right, so therefore, a bit like what we did above. So therefore, if this is a quadratic equation, x would equal 6 or it would equal minus 2. Lots of people, just, because the greater than sign here, said, therefore, x is greater than 6 or it's greater than minus 2. But that's not quite right. The limits of the inequality are 6 and minus 2. But to understand what the solutions are, we need to sketch a little graph. So the graph would go through, if this is a graph, the x quotients would be minus 2 and 6. Look a bit like this. Right, so here we have minus 2 and 6. So this thing has to be greater than 0. So we've got to look at which parts of this graph is it greater than 0. Which parts is it above the x-axis? Well, it's above the x-axis here, and it's above the x-axis here. The only part of the graph where it's not above the x-axis is the area in between minus 2 and 6. So, therefore, solutions to the equation to be greater than 0 above the x-axis are that x is less than minus 2 or x is greater than 6. They are the areas of the graph where it's greater than 0. And that is your final solution. The last question, simultaneous equation. You did a lot of these at GCC, but a lot of the ones at GCC were two linears where you use elimination. With, when one's linear and one's quadratic, you really need to be using substitution on them. So, in order to use substitution, what we need to do is rewrite the linear equation in such a way that it's in the form y equals x or x equals, and then sub that into the quadratic. So here, it's a lot easier to put this one in the form y equals and is x equals. So we're going to write this, I add the 3x to both sides and subtract the 2, as y equals 3x minus 2. I'm going to call that equation 1. And it's going to call this one equation 2. So now I've got this in the form y equals, I can sub this into equation 2. So to write that, I'm going to put 1 into 2. So everywhere we see a y, we can replace it with 3x minus 2. So instead of having y squared, I can write that as 3x minus 2 all squared. minus x minus 6x squared equals 0. It's important to remember that 3x minus 2 all squared, and look, some people made this mistake, is not 3x squared minus 2 squared. It is 3x minus 2 multiplied by 3x minus 2 in it, but it helps. Write, out, write it out like that. 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. That is what 3x minus 2 all squared is. I'm going to subtract. Remember, we've got the subtract x and subtract 6x squared as well. So, what we've got to do now then is 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. 3x times minus 2, which is minus 6x. Minus 2 times 3x, which is minus 6x. And minus 2 times minus 2, which is plus 4. That's the back is expanded. Then we've got, remember, we've still also got this minus x and this minus 6x squared. That equals zero. So, 
now I've got to do to simplify. So we've got 9x squared minus 6x squared, that's 3x squared. So I've got minus 6x minus 6x minus x, so that's minus 13x. And then we've got a plus 4. And that equals 0. So again, we can factorise, in order to solve this quadratic, factorise something with 3x squared, I need a 3x and an x at the beginning. It's going to add together to give, it's going to multiply together to give a positive, add together to give a negative, so we're going to need, therefore, two negatives. And it's going to be 4 and 1. Minus 4 times 3x is minus 12, minus 1 times x is minus 1, minus 12 minus 1 is minus 13. Minus 1 times minus 4 is plus 4. That's it factorised. So therefore, x equals a third, because 3x minus 1 equals 0, x equals a third, or x equals 4. That's a hard bit done. Now we've got to do is use these solutions, sub it into our equation one, find out what y should equal. So to put it into equation one, it said that y equals three x minus two. That means y could equal three times a third minus two. Three times a third is one, minus two is minus one or y could equal 3 times 4 minus 2. 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 is 10. So therefore our solutions, it's good to pair them together, our solutions are a third minus 1, when x is a third, y was minus 1, and 4, 10. And that is the whole paper done. Hopefully you found this useful. Those of you who are having the research on Wednesday the 9th of October, good luck with it and thank you for watching.